In this video, I want to get back working on the cat generator here. I want to update you on a few things that I've done off camera to, to get to the point where we're at now. And I have a couple goals I want to accomplish here. First is that when I finish, finish the crank case cleaning, I want to be done with that. I want to flush out the oil galleries, crankshaft, camshaft, uh, front timing gear train, all the oil galleries get flushed out. I want to clean the lower liner ceiling area in the block. All six cylinders need to be cleaned, buffed and clean. And if we have a chance, um, maybe take a look at the, the, the deck, the block, to the, head, the top of the block, the cylinder head ceiling surface. We'll check that for, uh, for flatness and you know, things like that. Maybe even look at the, the counter bores for the cylinder liners. So to begin with, I want to take you off the tripod and show you around. All right, the first thing you're going to notice is that the filtering system has changed for the fuel oil that I'm using to clean the crankcase out. I'd like to thank one of my patrons for donating this uh, Raycor filter housing here. Definitely a lot uh, easier to work with and more efficient than the bucket and homemade filter design that I made. So I uh, purchased some filters for this. They're fairly inexpensive and they, uh, they last a long time. So we're going to be using a 2 micron rated filter to do the final cleaning of the crankcase or rinsing of the crankcase and cleaning the oil galleries. So everything looks pretty much the same as we left off here. The case has been cleaned out. Cleaned out as best as I'm going to do it. Let's see. Oh, the camshaft's also been removed. I think left off with uh, last video, uh, not having the uh, correct socket to get that cam out, or to get that nut off the cam. Well, I ended up uh, modifying a socket to work, and I have that removed. Take a look at the uh, camshaft bearing here. See, it's got some scratches. It's a little rough. It's actually not out of spec though, but like I said, I can feel some irregularities in the surface, but I'm going to run it as is. All uh, four of the bearings look like this. Interestingly, this is the only bearing that receives pressure lubrication. The other three rely on the uh, oil grooves that are cut into the camshaft bearings on the shaft itself to carry oil into the bearing. But yeah, they all have this, this same surface, but not going to worry about it. It's good enough to run, that's for sure. See, I've got some lines hooked up to the uh, oil passages here. To When, when, we, when we start flushing, that'll drain the, uh, the flushing oil, the, sh the f fuel, rather, back into the, into the sump. But the front's cleaned up. Not much has changed over here. What else? Yeah, let's see, I cleaned up these uh, surfaces here where the uh, cam followers or the tappets, tappet guides sit. Kind of scraped all the paint off in the dirt. Got a couple of these rubber stoppers in here to keep dirt from getting down there. I have these, a couple of them out, just to take a look down there. You kind of see the rear cam bearing there. Same thing. Got some reach in there. Got some scratches, but those scratches you see there, I can't even feel them. So. And I've installed a uh, hose barb. This fitting here is what delivers the pressurized oil from the filter housing into the oil gallery that runs just under this surface here. So, the, the, the um, I guess this hexagonal part here is removable. It's like a nut. And the inner diameter was perfect for a 3 8 pipe thread. So I pulled that out, threaded it for 3 8 pipe, and put this hose barb in. So when we, when we do the final uh, bearing flushing, I'll just run the fuel right into here and let it spit out all the bearings. Well, let's take a look at the camshaft gear and the camshaft thrust bearing. Well, this parts table's getting pretty crowded here. So cam gear, the actual driven gear, and then this is the driving gear for the uh, injection pump here. 
We've got the camshaft thrust bearing here, big uh, brass or bronze thrust bearing with virtually no wear on it at all, which is nice. You can see where the, where the, the wear surface is, but no difference between here and the unworn surface. Maybe a half a thousandth. So and this is the retainer plate for that thrust bearing. I probably could have pulled this, pulled the camshaft with the gear on it as a unit, uh, utilizing the holes in the sorry the holes in the camshaft itself to access the bolts that hold the retainer plate on. But I mean, you can see here the sludge on this thing is so thick. Had to come off. So that'll all get cleaned up and inspected. Let's take a look at the cam itself. All right, over on the bench here, we got the cam itself. All five feet of it. So the bearings themselves are in fair condition. You can see the spiral oil grooves that are meant to carry oil that drips down from the. Uh, uh, called the pushrod tubes and what's just generally being thrown around the crankcase meant to carry them into the bearing surface here, the bearing journals. Same. And this is the one that actually has pressure lubrication feeding it, front bearing. One thing that's pretty much obvious uh, immediately is the, the difference in the lobe design between the intake lobe here and the exhaust. The duration is is the, the difference in the duration is pretty impressive. So you can see the large flat surface there and then the narrow surface here. So at first I thought I had a severely worn lobe but they're all like that and they all measure pretty much the same. So a couple of issues with the cam. Unfortunately there's really nothing I can do about it. Um, primarily it's what I mentioned in the, in the in a last video is this pitting you can see here. It's almost like staining, but there's very, very tiny pits in the lobe surface. And most of the lobes have evidence of this. Some is just staining, some is work, some are worse than others. And this is, I believe, it's similar to what we had on the, the gear, the actual cam gear. It's that surface rust that formed when this thing was sitting for probably months or years when it was in service. And then when it was required, when the power went out, they just started it up. They didn't exercise the thing regularly. So all of the oil probably ran off of these surfaces and moisture condensed on there. So that one's that one's alright. That one's has well, it does have some some evidence right on the, the actual tip of the lobe, which is not, not great. But I'm going to polish all these up with some uh, very fine Scotch-Brite and uh, make sure there's no rough areas or excessively rough areas and run it because, you know, I'm not, not, not going to go have this Camry ground. It's not... Uh, one of, it's one of those things that's not worth doing for the kind of service this unit's going to see. You know, maybe 20, 20 or so hours, 30 hours a year running uh, at shows and things like that. But I think it'll be fine. So let's move on to uh, doing some actual work here. Alright, well, I'm going to try to get you a little bit of an action shot here again. Scraping this... Uh ceiling area. Now I have uh, I have some rags laid out over the uh, uh, main bearing journals with the crevices there and then a little piece of uh, sign board to try to catch the grit. That should be a good angle. The only reason I'm starting with this cylinder is because it has the best lighting for you. But uh, alright, let me go around and start scraping that. Now I might get in your light here, put a little extra there. 
something that's not in my way, at least. Now, I'm not going to be able to catch all of this grit, obviously. Some of it's going to just fall down onto various surfaces within the case, but I think that once I, once we do the rinse, that will be sufficient to clean any of the remaining grit. Just using a regular utility razor blade for this. Right with some WD-40 sprayed on it. I find that WD-40 works, works pretty well as a as a cleaner for applications like this. Just helps to rinse rinse the Scotch Bright pad out every once in a while. Not splashing all this in the camera lens. Oh well. Wipe that off and see what that looks like. I'm gonna have to come down where you guys are at because I can't see from up here. Is that looking any better? Oh yeah, I did get it in the camera lens. <laughs> oh well. Let's see. So it looks like it's got grooves in it from, from here while looking through the camera. Reach my hand up in here. And I do feel what, what feels like almost machine marks, machining grooves. Now you can see where the, let's see if I can point that out. You can almost see the, where the two O-rings were sealing, here and here it looks like. Or it could be that bright line in the center. That's probably where the O-ring was sealing. The top O-ring was sealing here, and the lower O-ring was sealing here. But the transition from this rough area, the rough casting, to this machine surface is smooth. It looks like there's a step there, and there is a bit, but there's no high spots. It doesn't really appear to be any pitting in here either, which is good. I think I'll work on this one a little bit more. And then um, 
I go over it with a little bit of brake clean on that scotch bright. See if it doesn't help. All right, how's that looking? Any better? I think it's. I think that's perfectly acceptable. Yep. Okay. Well, one down, five to go. Let me get that taken care of, and we'll uh, start flushing oil galleries. Okay. All of the lower uh, liner seal surfaces are cleaned up. It's time to start flushing these oil galleries out. So I've already kind of experimented with this a little bit and I, I've got a plan together for how I'm going to do it. Now one thing, I guess I should say the first thing I'm going to do is flush from the connecting rod journal oil holes right there like on the crankshaft. Flush from those back toward the oil supply or what would be the oil pump. Now in order to do that I have to have the crankshaft rotated in a specific orientation uh, which is each journal must be at the bottom of its stroke or at its lowest point and that's because the oil hole that's actually you can kind of see it I get you in here that fitting right there that copper line in the fitting Right here, the hole is drilled down through the casting, and the main bearing shells do not have an oil groove cut in their diameter or along their inner circumference, if I'm saying that correctly. So the drilling in the connecting rod journal, which runs from the discharge hole horizontally up through the crankshaft forging, exits the bearing journal I guess right here so it would be the highest point on the bearing journal right now that hole has to line up with the oil delivery hole in the bearing shell because there's no groove so this uh, connecting rod bearing only receives oil pressure when it's probably rotating through the bottom I would say 20 to 25 degrees of its rotation as those holes line up. Now the holes are fairly large, they're about 5 16 diameter. So, like I said, there's probably about 25 degrees of crankshaft rotation where that hole can receive uh, oil pressure to lubricate the connecting rod. Uh, to kind of illustrate what I'm trying to say, let's look at the the piston, the connecting rod bearings themselves. So, unlike these bearings which have this oil channel cut in them, the main bearings do not have that, they're just a solid bearing. So, kind of an interesting setup, but that's the way it is. So, in order to flush these, I've just got my, my hose here with a little small hose on the end of it, and that's 
this fits right inside that hole and I can run this hose pretty much all the way up through the drilled passage in the crankshaft to kind of try to scrape any debris along and flush it out as I'm going. Once I've flushed all six rod journals, then we'll, we'll flip the system around and we'll pump fuel oil in that fitting that I mentioned earlier, which is now capped off and flush the system out the opposite direction while rotating the crankshaft. Let's see, what else do I have to say before we get started? Uh, let's see, nothing other than I've taken a piece of hose here and I've inserted it in this front cam journal bearing to block this oil hole here. So I want to try to build a little bit of pressure and maybe try to divert any debris out these two lines here and then push it the way back. The only other exit that this fuel or the, the, the flushing liquid is going to have is over at this point there's an oil hole move this a little bit uh, it, this journal here is where the cam uh, oil pump drive sits and there's a, an oil gallery there so this is going to leak pretty good most of the pressure is going to come out here I imagine uh, going through these so, because the only other bearing journal that's going to be aligned is the number six journal and they'll get we'll get some flow out of there as well so initially I'm just going to flush these two back and forth and then rotate the crank move on to number two and number uh, five and then do number three and number four so let's get started here okay now forgive me if I get in the way here I'm trying to figure out the best way to line this shot up so you can actually see what's going on so let me hop up here on the deck turn the pump on be a little bit too much flow. flowing fuel or flushing liquid as I turned, uh, began to call it. I don't think I'd use it, use it as fuel at this point. So here we go. We're pushing fuel into the uh, connecting rod journal there. Got some leaking out. Oh, can you see some there dripping from the, the main journal? Got fuel coming out of the. This is what feeds the uh, oil pump drive or fuel pump drive. Got some coming out from the uh, front cam journal. Some over here from the timing gear lube uh, port. Got some leaking out from the uh, the uh, crankshaft thrust bearing area. Again, we're running this through a 2 micron filter, so the fuel that's coming through up into the bearing gap, uh, oil galleries, is quite clean. Now let's look down the line here. See the other journal? This is the number 6 journal. Now I, could, I should have maybe plugged this hole up, but I don't think it's really going to matter. If I plug this by hand, we should see some fuel exiting this uh, uh, what do you call that uh, actually I'm surprised we're not seeing any fuel coming out of there this line here which is the oil pump shaft drive that's a bit surprising let's 
you see we're getting uh, some dripping from all of the, well it looks like, yeah certainly, all of the main bearings. Anything out of here? Yeah, a little bit, a couple drips. And you can't really see back there. And I'm surprised we're not getting anything out of this line here. Maybe this is actually plug. Could be. Now let's see if we can work this around a little bit more. Try to get any particulates loosened up. Can't really tell. Kind of have to assume it's working. So I'm gonna let that go for about 10 more minutes. Five to 10 minutes, and then we'll move on. We'll put the pressure on this uh, number six journal here, and we'll flush it in the opposite direction. Okay, we're now flushing the number six journal. And we can see some fuel dripping from the rear main bearing. Getting a couple drips from this bearing. Well, we do have flow. Now, I, <laughs> I recalled why I wasn't getting any flow from the, uh, uh, I almost said distributor, oil pump drive. And that's because I already have a piece of hose in there. Forgot about that. Blocking that uh, discharge out. It says a lot about how far this uh, cleaning process has come. Because the, uh, the, the fuel we're draining out of the sump is not completely black yet. I don't know if you recall that when I, when I started this process, this was pitch black coming out of here, full of grit. The sump is actually relatively clean now. The process certainly isn't done, but it's made uh, made great strides. See, we're not getting any discharge from these lines anymore. It's all coming out of the front journal here. We'll plug this up, and we should get some flow out of here. Yep, there we go. Now I've got the discharge of the pump pretty well choked down. You see there. So we're definitely not flowing anywhere near the volume this pump is capable of. I imagine that when we pull out all the stops, so to speak, we pull out the hose from here and the hose from the front cam bearing and actually pressurize the entire system, we're gonna need all the volume this pump can provide to build pressure. Well, I'm going to keep at it. All right, well, now we're at full flow and we're actually pumping into the main oil gallery. We're flushing in the direction that the oil would normally be flowing. We've got flow out of number six and number one up there. Now, I want to show you what I meant by the rods only received oil pressure for part of their revolution. So let's watch this uh, number three here. I'm going to rotate the crankshaft. We're going to wait and see when we start getting slow. Can you see that? Just starting to get a little bit out of it. there. That might have been residual actually. We're still not getting any real flow. Oh, there it goes. So that's it. Ah, that's probably, that's more than 25 degrees of rotation. That's probably 45 degrees of rotation. So it gets, uh, receives pressure about 45 degrees of rotation. Now 
and we're still getting still getting flow out of our main journals, our main bearings. Yep. Getting flow out front here. A little bit trickling out of the front bearing, uh, front cam bearing. Got some coming out of the thrust bearing still, and a couple out of our little lines here. Yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna keep at this for probably another hour. Just continuously flow flu uh, fluid through here and get any particulate out. I did see a few little chunks come out. These little speckles you see down there, they came out of a couple of the bearings. So, we're definitely doing something. So, I'm satisfied with it. Well, I think we'll let this go and come back when we're ready to do the final rinse. I'm going to get prepared for that. Alright, so now that we're done with cleaning the oil galleries, let's uh, move on to the final rinse of the crankcase. So I've put some plywood covers over the in, uh, access ports. Now, you'll notice I've got these plugged holes here. Uh, once I'm done what I'm about to show you, the, the first rinse, I'm going to rinse through each one of these ports and wash each, each individual uh, bank or cylinder down. So, right now I've got just a copper tube here. It's got little holes drilled in it along its length. And that pretty much is sitting right above the, uh, the cam journals. There's a gap that runs all the way through in there. There you go, that's a good view there. Runs all the way through. Let me go ahead and hit the pump and I'll show you uh, what kind of flow we have through there. I'm just going to let that run, rotate it around every once in a while, kind of swing the, swing the spray around, get different areas, and yeah, pretty much just let that self-clean for an hour or so. And uh, move on to the next step. But I think while this is running, While this is running, let's uh, get the straight edge out and take a look at the uh, at the deck of the block here. Okay, well you'll have to excuse the uh, the pump noise running. As you can see, we're still flowing uh, liquid there to rinse the block out. But I figured while that's running, we'll take a look at the the deck here of the cylinder block and see what kind of condition it's in. So I've already given it a, a bit of a clean up. And I've went over the surface with a stone. And you can see clearly the high spots everywhere where it's actually been, been polished smooth as a high spot. And you can see really, especially along these uh, uh, smaller head studs, these are the 5.8 studs. And these are the 7 8 studs here. The 7 8 studs, the threads are about an inch and a quarter down the hole. The 5 8 studs, the threads are right at the top. Let me step down. So you can see that especially like around this one, for example, the, the iron has actually been pulled up by the torque that was applied to the stud. So that's created a high spot around those threads. Same thing here. You can see a high spot. Pretty much almost all of the 5 8 studs are, have been drawn up. This one significantly. But the deck is in, is in fair shape. I don't see any evidence of cracking at all. So that's a, that's a big plus. The counterbores are in nice shape as well. I've measured those 
and they're all, I forget now, I think it's 55 thousandths deep. I can't quite remember. But anyway, between, with the, uh, with the counter bore, the seal, and then the height of the liner, the liner has about a 5 thousandth protrusion above the, the uh, deck surface. So, I think maybe we'll, we'll visit, we'll, we'll take a closer look at that in another video. But let's just set up here real quick. I'm gonna see if I can bring the uh, stand over here and get you set up, and we're gonna check the surface here with this straight edge. This is from Suburban Tool. It's a three foot precision straight edge. So let's take a look at this deck here. Okay, now I'm doing my best to show you what I'm doing here. Maybe if I lower you down a little bit. Stand by one sec. Bring it down closer to the, the deck surface. You can kind of see what I'm looking at. Okay. So I've got my light here. I'm going to stand this straight edge up. I've already made sure that the surface is clean. The deck is clean of any particles or dirt. So let's stand it right up here along the edge. This is going right across a bunch of those 5 8 holes for those 5 8 studs. Now the straight edge itself has a, has a flat on it, so I'm standing it right there on that flat edge. I'll shine my light behind it and look down and look for light passing through. And I can see, I can see a number of spots. Now, ignoring what, what light is coming through the hole, the, the, the actual hole for the stud, we're looking at the light that is visible between them. And it's there, but I don't think I can get my, my finished feeler game through that. Let me go grab my feeler gauges. I think the, the smallest one I have is one and a half thousand. Give me a sec. Okay, I'm back. Let me see if I can really zoom in and show you what I'm looking at. Get real close in there. Okay. I don't know where you're pointing. You're zoomed so close in. Where are you pointing at? Right here. All right, so you're looking right here. Hopefully I stay in shot for you. Stand this straight edge up. i going to turn my light on. Shine it behind the, the edge. I'm afraid to leave that teetering on there. <laughs> okay. So, I'll take my, my, font, my smallest feeler gauge, which is one and a half thousand. Obviously, right here, here's a bolt hole. Slips right in there. But, I'm just balancing the, the straight edge. And although I can see the, the faintest evidence of light along here, the, the feeler gauge will not drop in. Not even kind of. Move on. Actually, you're not going to see anything I'm doing, so let me zoom back out. I hope it wasn't in your way for that. Well, let's check, uh, let's check down, straight down the center. Let me move you over here a little bit. And we're gonna check right down the center line here. 
Again, we have those 5 8 studs right down the center. And this one's been, this one's high too around the outside of it. So let's stand this up. across the tops of those bullet holes. Again, I can see I can see just a little bit of light. And I can just definitely see that it's resting on those high spots there. But I, I'm not able to get the feeling gauge in. position here. Well, 
I guess I'll go a few other directions. I'll go horizontally across a few cylinders, but I think the results are going to be pretty good overall. Yeah, that's a that's a relief. I'd hate to I'd hate to do all this work cleaning the crankcase out, only to find that I have to take the block and get it get it uh, surfaced. I don't have the capability to do that here. That's for sure. If I did find uh, a bad spot, or a low spot, and it wasn't because of a high spot around these uh, bolt holes, that would really be my only option. Alright, well, time to put an end to this video. Thanks everybody for sticking with it. I think I got everything done that I wanted to get accomplished. We're still in the process of rinsing out the crankcase, but got the block checked out, the deck rather, made sure that was nice and straight, nice and flat. Got the oil galleries cleaned out, that was a big step. Everything flushed out there. And got the lower uh, liner seals, not the seals, but the sealing surfaces of the block cleaned as well. That's uh, a big step. So. I uh, appreciate everybody watching. If you uh, if you want to support the channel, I would appreciate it. It's uh, the, the channel on Patreon is Mike's Engine and Generator Shop. So check that out and uh, give me some ideas for videos, different things you want to see, uh, anything specific regarding any any kind of generator information or electrical information. I would sure like to help you out with that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.